Uh, Whidbey Island is a great uh, place to be stationed at. It's always green. It's, you know, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful place to raise a family if you're an outdoors kind of person. Um, I had just gotten back from a deployment with VQ140 and we were trying to get back in the swing of things, uh, uh, trying to get back integrated with the family. You know, the family had been uh, living without you for the past seven, eight months and, you know, we're trying to all bond together, you know. It's like I'm a new person in the house. Uh, Mandy was a special girl. <laughs> she was my blonde, as we called her, and um, her hobbies were guitar, um, she loved children, she loved to babysit, but mainly it was um, just an outdoor girl. She liked to be outdoors, ride her bike. It was great, you know, it, typical, you know, family bonding. Just one day, um, woke up, you know, Saturday morning, typical Saturday morning. Uh, went downstairs, kind of hanging around, you know, enjoying the time off. Uh, my daughter comes down, my youngest daughter at the time, you know, and tells me, Daddy, where's Mandy? Well, you know, I grab my daughter and we go upstairs and, you know, I open the door and she's not in the room. You know, open my other daughter's bedroom, see if she's in there, you know, maybe she slept over, you know, with my other daughter. Nope, she was by herself. So I'm like, okay. There was a park close by, so, um, you know, yelling her name, see if she's anywhere, nothing. I said, well, maybe she went to work with my wife, you know, for whatever reason. So I call, you know, my wife, say, hey, is uh, Mandy there with you? My wife was like, no, why, why would she be with me? I'm like, I don't know, well, you know, she's not here and I thought maybe she, you know, went to go to work with you. She's like, no, uh, maybe searched for another five, 10 minutes, kind of went outside, you know, kind of yelling for Mandy, you know, Mandy, where are you? So I start calling her friends. At this point, when I get this young man's name, um, I call him. So I'm um, talking to the young man, you know, the man was respectful and everything. I tell him, hey, have you seen my daughter, you know, Amanda? The kid was like, yes, sir, I did. And I said, when did you meet her? She goes, I met her last night around midnight. I'm like, around midnight? She goes, yes, sir, you know, uh, we were there to talk and we talked for a little bit, you know, and then she left. And I'm like, okay, do you know where she went after that? She goes, no, sir. And then I told him, okay. I said, at this point, I said, you're the last one to see my daughter, so you need to stay home uh, because I'm gonna call the police because they need to come talk to you. Uh, by the time the police have spoken to this young man, he had changed his story about five times in the first hour. We searched for 68 days. Um, to me, it was days. I had to take it day by day by day. It was sometimes minute by minute, but mainly day by day is what, we, what I took it. Mm. Everything was just going in circles. Um, during all our search, um, you know, it, every day was, oh my God, are we gonna find her today? I hope we find her today. Financially, at that point, we were, um, we weren't even paying our bills because, uh, you know, we were buying flyers by the, by the hundreds. So it was financially, draining at the same time like I said for me I was enduring both the emotional and emotional and financial uh, heartache of it you know and I don't want to tell the wife or the kids or anybody because like I said I already knew they were going through a hard time as well um, it was emotionally hard um, I at the time I didn't even think about financially how we were gonna make it because it didn't really matter to me all that mattered was finding Mandy, and since I had stopped working, I just, I knew we were financially in trouble, I just didn't know how much. You know, I was paying for food for people to come help us search. Um, we were, uh, I mean, any, any money that we had saved up at that point was gone, and, you know, it was emotionally rough on all, all levels, emotionally, financially. You name it, it was, it was rough. We were getting ready to do a major search. We had contacted a couple of uh, foundations that help, uh, you know, help search for kids. Uh, the Class Kid Foundation and the uh, Laurel Recovery Center. 
uh, they came into town to help us, you know, complete a major search. Um, we had planned it, you know, we've been on, you know, planning it for maybe two or three days. Uh, and the whole town was gonna get involved. The, new, the news was in town. Everybody was, okay, we're gonna do a big search of the island. Uh, we're gonna do grid by grid till we get the whole island searched. The next morning, we did our morning prayer saying, okay, uh, we're gonna find her today, we're gonna find her today. So once we got to the church where everybody was supposed to set up, it was kind of empty. At that point, uh, they called us back, said, hey, you need to come to the house. Uh, we got some news over here. We're like, okay, so uh, we drove back to the house. Um, that was probably the hardest um, drive we've ever had. Uh, as we're driving to the house, you know, I see the chief of police, uh, my commanding officer, you know, they're in their dress blues. Um, uh, they're all, I mean, they're pretty much there to tell us they found my daughter. <clears throat> Walk inside, they tell us what happened. You know, and that's when we lost it, you know, because it wasn't the ending that we wanted. <clears throat> but at that point, you know, the next thing my question was, was how are we going to bury my daughter? I don't, we don't have the money. I don't know what to do, you know, so I'm, I'm probably cracking the hardest out of everybody because I know at this point, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, my command master chief at the time, uh, master chief Heap, grabbed me by the hand and said, what's the matter, son? I told him, master chief, I don't know how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna pay for all this, you know, I have no money in my pocket. And that's when he said, come here, put me in this vehicle and drove us straight to Navy Marine Corps Relief Society. You know, at this point, everything is just so, you know, crazy. But we're sitting there and, you know, she's going through our finances and she's going through, uh, you know, the budget that they do uh, when they're getting ready to help you out. Um, and they went through my whole thing and next thing you know, they're like, okay, here you go. You know, and I'm, me and my wife kind of look at each other and was like, oh. I do recall them you know, just being simply amazing to us and being able to help us out of this hardship because we knew it was gonna be hard, it was gonna be expensive. Um, <clears throat> trying to get her buried, trying to get to El Paso and back. As I grabbed the checks that they're giving me, you know, it's checks to pay my vehicle. I had two vehicles at the time and they gave me money to pay three months worth of vehicles. They gave me money for groceries. They gave us money uh, to catch up on some of the bills that we had uh, passed on. And they also gave us money for uh, plane tickets for me, my wife, and my three kids and my grandson to go from uh, Seattle to El Paso, Texas and back to help us bury my kids. At this point, you know, I'm kind of like, oh my God, <sighs> you know, I already have bills. I how am I gonna pay all this back? You know, and that's, the lady gets up, come gives us a hug and says, no son, that's, that's a grant. And I'm going, a grant? She said, yeah. Um, we know what you all have been through. And you know, this is to help you guys get back on your feet. And at that point, me and my wife just, you know, we just lost it because we, you know, we couldn't believe that the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society just took all the financial heartache out and put us back on track and be able to concentrate concentrate on doing what we have to do for my daughter. Sailors should, should support Navy Marine Corps Relief Society because they're there when you don't think you're gonna need them. You don't ever wanna need them. I didn't wanna need them, but they were there for me when I did. And when you support them, you're not just supporting something that might happen to you in the future because you know again you don't want nothing to happen to you I understand that but you want to make sure that you can help a shipmate out and for me it's like a million thank yous that I have to send out because of the sailors and shipmates that were out there at the time that helped donate at that point helped me in my time I need. Navy Relief is there to help sailors and like he says, you hopefully might not want to need them for anything, but if you do, you, you want to have that confidence knowing that somebody gave to this great 
organization so they can help you out.